Hey guys, so I am here to do uh, my annual top 10 best films of the year 2019 list. Uh, I know it's like February 2020 when I'm doing this, but uh, I know I'm late in the game. I'm pretty much everybody's done their top 10 list by this point, but hey, I know better late than never, right? Uh, like I said, over the last few years, I've been see trying to see as much as I can a lot of the big films that I can before I make my top 10 list I figured right as the Oscars are about to happen tomorrow night I figured it's only fitting that I do my list uh before the Oscars happen and uh there's, there's gonna be a few uh surprises on this list it's just to say I could see a lot of a couple of these not being on a lot of top 10 lists and there's a lot of ones that are on here that are probably on everyone's and so it's a majority it's a mixture of both it's one of those i it's my preferences of what i thought was great and you know not everybody will agree with me um just to give you an idea of a couple of movies that just barely made the top 10 list and a lot of people will be shocked that they're not on here Stuff like Joker is not on here. <laughs> uh, I, I I know it's one of those movies. It's hard. It was hard to take off, but I did. Uh, and also, 1917, the movie that's probably going to win Best Picture next at, at the Oscars, isn't on my top ten list. Uh, I again, both movies. If I were to make a top twelve, they would be on it. <laughs> but this is a top ten, so uh, here we go. Top or number ten, uh, Us. Uh, the new Jordan Peele film that came, horror film that came out this past year, uh, which was a goddamn uh, great follow-up to Get Out, even though I thought it wasn't as good as Get Out. That's why it's not as higher on my list as Get Out was. Uh, I like I said, I like Get Out a lot, uh, just a little bit better than this, but I still love this movie. Uh, it was a trippy ass movie with one of the best performances of the year with by Lupin and Nyong'o, who, like everybody, I will agree, it's she was snubbed at the Oscars, and it's ridiculous that she didn't get nominated. I don't know why the Oscars hate horror movies, but they do, uh, and it's ridiculous that she didn't get nominated, especially how how good she is in playing two different roles like two different versions of the same person and she nails it like her monologue as the tethered version of herself is where she's talking about her life uh when she has the family kidnapped first kidnapped is one of the most chilling uh, monologues I've heard in a while. It's a great fucking one of the best scenes in point of 2019. Uh, I love the movie. Uh, it also had a damn good twist ending that I did see coming. I'll admit I did see the twist coming pretty early on. I figured out what the twist was, but even then I was like, it was still a fun ride to sit through. Like I said, I didn't love it as much as Get Out, but I still loved it. Uh, number nine, Ventures in Game. Uh, I have to put this on my list. It's the culmination of 10 to 11 years of a movie franchise. Uh, I love the Marvel movies, and this was everything this movie needed to be. And being the culmination, like I said, of uh, a... Like, building a franchise for 10 to 11 years, and... I, it was it, it, this movie featured one of my favorite mo movie moments of the year when all the Avengers assembled at the end of the movie, and he had every fucking character that's ever been in a Marvel movie, every superhero that's ever been in a Marvel movie coming together in this one final big giant battle, and you know, Captain America saying Avengers assemble. I marked out. I'm, like, I'm not a big comic book guy. I fucking marked out in the theater. Uh, it's a three-hour movie. Yeah, uh, it was. It was uh, a kind of a movie that was butt numbing, but it, I was never bored. I can never say I was ever bored. 
Uh, I was intrigued as to what the what was going to happen. Uh, I thought Robert Downey Jr. should have got an Oscar nomination for his last performance as Iron Man. It was fucking stellar. Uh, he has nailed this performance out of the park. Uh, I love this movie. Uh, I can't say more any more than anybody else hasn't said about it. Number eight. This is going to be a surprise to some people. Doctor Sleep. I love Dr. Sleep. I seem to be one of the few fucking people out there that kind of do. Uh, it seems like there's a mixture of both. There's either people that love it or hate it. I love Dr. Sleep. And in my opinion, it was the best horror movie of the year. I, god damn it, I love this movie. It was, I, The Shining was one of my, is my, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And this movie was, you know, I was looking forward to, but I was a little worried because it's a sequel to one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and it's coming like 40 years later, and god damn, I love this movie. <laughs> I can't say that enough. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson as Rose the Hat is one of the most terrifying horror movie villains that I've seen in a while. Uh, this movie has some really intense... Disturbing scenes, including that scene of Jacob Tremblay as the baseball boys. Something that will still fucking be burned into my memory for the rest of my life. Uh, I love this. It, it, it's a movie that, on paper, the story sounds stupid as hell, but it fucking works. And you have Mike Flanagan, one of the best horror directors out there today, who just knocks the shit out of the park. Like, if this was given to a different like a different filmmaker this might not have worked because it, like I said it's ridiculous on paper and if it was given to the wrong person it wouldn't work I love this movie go fucking watch it uh number seven rocket man I the movie the much better version of Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> uh this movie is what everything that is everything that Bohemian Rhapsody should have been. It's R-rated. It's fucking unapologetic. It doesn't pull any punches. It's, you know, not a fucking pussy-ass version, uh, version of this famous rock star's life. Uh, like Bohemian Rhapsody was. And I like Bohemian Rhapsody, but that movie did not... Freddie Mercury deserved a lot better, especially after you watch this movie, you will agree. And the fact that Taron Egerton didn't get a nomination and fucking Freddy, or Rami Malek got a nomination and, and even a fucking Oscar is bullshit. I am sorry. Taron Egerton's performance as Elton John is way fucking better. A way better movie. Like I said, this movie, I love the fact that this, one, this is one of my favorite kinds of biopics where this movie isn't afraid to show that this person was a kind of a dick. Because <laughs> Elton John was kind of a dick to a lot of people, especially in his early days when he was doing a lot of drugs. And it's not afraid to show you that. And I love this movie. Um, and it's a shame that this movie got fucking ignored at the Oscars. It's bullshit. And that stuff like, like I said, Bohemian Rhapsody got all those fucking awards it did. And this doesn't get anything. That's horseshit. Uh, number six, Jojo Rabbit. Uh, I just reviewed this a couple of weeks ago, and but I fucking love this movie. Uh, this movie was such a weird idea on paper. It's such a weird movie in delivery about a, a kid who's you know, raised, living in Nazi Germany who his best friend is an imaginary version of Hitler. This is this very friendly version of Hitler. And he's trying to, he's a Hitler youth who believes in everything that Hitler is stand, stands for. And the Nazi party stands for. And then he comes across a German, uh, it comes across a Jewish girl that's hiding in his house. And he's all conflicted. I, I fucking love this movie. It's a great comedy uh, which I never would have expected with the source material that they could pull something like this off, but it's really good. Everybody, like, the kid was really good. Uh, the little girl who, the girl who, the Jewish girl that's hiding in his walls was really great. Uh, Taika Waititi, I, it makes me want to see more of his stuff. Like, I between this, only movies I've seen of his was for Ragnarok and this, and I want to see more of his shit. He is a really talented director at making some weird-ass movies. Um, 
I really fucking love this movie, and I uh, definitely a movie that should win screenplay. One, it should be one of the favorites. Although, well, yeah, never mind. There is one other movie that probably will win it and deserves it. Maybe a little bit more, but I love this movie. Go see if you haven't seen it. Number five, Uncut Gems. Uh, another big Oscar fucking snob that er, snub that everybody's talked about. I uh, I don't know what to say about it that about the snub that hasn't been said already. Adam Sandler fucking deserved an Oscar nomination. He probably honestly his performance was better than Joaquin Phoenix's. This was unreal. His performance was unreal in this movie. This was like just. It was awesome to see him do something different that he hadn't done before. And this movie was one of the most intense films I've sat through all fucking year. Uh, like a lot of people said, you need... It, it's an anxiety... It, it's a two-hour anxiety attack. That's the best way to describe this movie. It's not a movie that's for everybody. Uh, I know a lot of people that didn't like it. Uh, but you're wrong. No. Um, yeah, I... It's it's a movie that I needed. If you, I probably needed a fucking strong ass Xanax after I watched it. Uh, but man, and it's one of those movies. It's like you know what's gonna happen. You hope this guy's even even though you know what's gonna happen. You hope this guy pulls through. Even though it's not, you know it's not gonna end well for this guy. You're pulling for this guy, even though he's a really despicable human being, pretty terrible human being. I wouldn't say despicable. Kind of a terrible human being. He's and a lot of the the, the stuff that he. The problems he has is his own damn fault, um, and it's a. Fuck it, I would never show this movie to a person that has a gambling addiction because they probably would have an anxiety attack. Uh, I love this movie. Fuck, go watch Uncut Gems. And it's ridiculous that movie got snubbed. Number four, Knives Out. Uh, this is a movie that was right up my alley with the murder mystery whodunit. Uh, and... It's a fun film that had like so many great actors put into one film with Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Don Johnson, uh, Daniel Craig, like Keith Stayfield. Uh, I forget if I'm saying his name right. Uh, fuck Tony Collette, uh, fucking Christopher Plummer. God damn, this movie was great. It's a movie that was kind of unconventional. If you haven't seen it, in that. You kind of find out very early on who did it, who killed Christopher Plummer, and it's kind of fascinating, it, like that it does that. Like I said in this movie, when I reviewed this movie a few months back, and like it makes you curious as to like, okay, what the fuck is gonna happen now? And <laughs> it's it's a fun little ride. Like it keeps you guessing throughout the whole movie, and I had a lot of fun watching it. It's. Uh, old school, like I said, murder mystery who done it uh, in the like you know vein of stuff like Agatha Christie or anything like that. I really fucking love this movie. Um, definitely one of the more well written ones. I love this family. How horrible they were! Or <laughs> they were one of the most worst families I've seen in 2019. They'll put on film. They're like just terrible people, but they're awesome to sit through. Um, Number three, Marriage Story. Um, the best, probably one of the best written movies of the year. And a movie that, again, Adam Driver had a better performance than fucking Joaquin Phoenix. Look, I liked Joaquin Phoenix. It's not the end all be all performance. He, this is a movie that obviously, again, the Oscars are just pretty much set that he is winning the Oscar. We know he's going to win the Oscar. I can call it right now. Anybody with half a brain will tell you. But Adam Driver is almost more deserving, especially since like people like Adam Sandler are not nominated. Fucking uh, Adam Driver is more deserving. Him and this movie features the best performance I've seen of his in Scarlett Johansson's career. And it's a movie that I think a lot of people can relate to who are married are no mar any married people and have heard some of the conversations they've had over the years. Uh, it's kind of, like I said, even though I'm not married, I have a sister that's married, and I've heard some about 
heard some of the same conversations between her and her ex-husband uh, having about the same conversations that the characters in this movie have. And it was kind of very eerie to watch. Uh, Goddamn, it is a really, really great movie. And it's really funny, too. Funny, awesome performances by Laura Dern, supporting performances by Laura Dern, and even Ray Liotta, who didn't even get rec- any uh, credit. But he is awesome in this movie, too, I thought. Um, go check this out. It's, again, th- this is like, the first time I could think of that this is a Netflix movie uh, has put up been put on my list. But guess what? It's not the last. Because number two, The Irishman. Man, number two, number one, I'll say this right now. I knew right off the bat, number two, number one, right off the fucking bat. Uh, it, but it's a, it's. I went back and forth from which was number one, which one was number two, because you could go either way. It was hard for me. I love both these movies. These are the absolute fucking best films of the year. There was no doubt about it, which num- what number one and number two were. But like I said, just figuring out which... <laughs> which went with which went where if that makes any sense i was just uh, the irishman i've talked about this movie this is about as close to a fucking masterpiece if i've ever seen it i love this movie i i was glowing about this movie when i reviewed it i could not stop talking about how great this movie from return to form from al pacino and one of his best performances in a goddamn long time as uh jimmy hoffa honestly if there wasn't for another performance that <laughs> came out this year he probably should get best would get some best supporting actor uh i'll talk about that in a second uh and also joe pesci seeing joe pesci in a movie and him being kind of a little bit more subdued joe pesci than what we've seen over the years it's not the same joe pesci crazy joe pesci that you usually see in these kind in these kinds of movies gangster movies uh and robert de niro who i thought got snubbed in two for one of his best performances of his career this is mark scorsese's masterpiece like this is like if he could end his career right now on this fuck <laughs> like his we had a perfect career uh i've heard this is one of those movies that there's been a backlash because every time there's a movie that's gotten a lot of praise there's always some weird fucking backlash people try to tell me it's too long it's too boring it the effects suck Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. That's pretty much our response to every one of those people. Shut up. Watch this movie. This is a fucking cinematic, almost a close to a cinematic masterpiece. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, I love this movie. Like I said, this is like... <sighs> <laughs> like I, I, I could glow about this movie more and more and more, but I want to get over it. I want to get this uh, video over with as quick as possible. And number one, number one has been number one for a goddamn long time. It's anybody who knows me knows probably what my number one is. It's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I didn't review. I didn't do rev- start doing reviews when I. Uh, saw this. Uh, it was back in July. It, I was barely going to the movies about this time. This is right before I got Regal and Limited. Like, literally a couple days right before I got Regal and Limited, I saw this. And I... <laughs> this was one of the few times that like, I was like, Tarantino's got a new movie? I'm going to the theater! Bye! <laughs> like, um, and this is probably one of Tarantino's best movies ever made he's ever made this is his most mature movie uh it features two great fucking performances from leonardo dicaprio who i thought was really fucking good in the lead role and also brad pitt who has easily the best fucking scene in the whole movie most of the scenes that involve so most of the best scenes in this movie involve Brad Pitt's character between the Bruce Lee scene, which I know everybody fucking has argued about how controversial that scene is. That scene is hilarious. I don't give a shit. That scene, I cracked up. That's probably the biggest laughing out of theater was that fucking well, other than that, the ending too, but um, 
he like his performance like he is definitely gonna get best supporting actor I, there is pretty much no doubt about it and it's well deserved man he was awesome in this movie uh his his scene at the end of the, his part of the end of the movie if you haven't seen this this movie i will say this about this movie if you haven't seen this movie i won't spoil it but because I, I don't know if you have or not. I mean, it's kind of hard not to have seen this movie by now. But uh, this movie has one of the be- easily the best ending to any film I've seen all year. I love this ending to this movie. It is... I have never fucking laughed so hard in a theater. I've never had a whole theater laughing uncontrollably at the ending of this movie. How fucking batshit insane that ending was. It is so satisfying. It is... If there is one thing about Tarantino, I'm a big Tarantino fan, so this is like that... He knows how to make... How to conclude his movies. He knows how to have a great payoff to his movies. And this is a great example. Uh, Up until this point, a lot of people said, like, honestly, it was like, kind of like a kid version of a Tarantino movie. It wasn't really violent. It really wasn't. I even said that, like, up until that point. I was like, man, this movie's pretty mature and tame for a Tarantino movie. Then that fucking ending happened, and it's like, whoa, there's the Tarantino we all know and love. But it's still so awesome. I love, 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 love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I cannot... (sighs) It's if Tarantino were to retire right now, he said he's gonna do one more film. He should just retire with this. Is this would be a perfect send off? This was his love letter to Hollywood, uh, 1960s Hollywood. I, I hope it, he has high expectations for his last movie. Uh, what his last movie is gonna be? I don't know what the hell it's gonna be, but he has very high expectations to live up to. Love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Before I get off this, uh, quit this video, I do want to say, uh, give you my best of the decade. Uh, I'm not going to give you my list. I'm not, I didn't put up a list because it's, dude, I don't have time to sit there and go, what was the best films of the decade? I'd be sitting there fucking ever, right? I was like, okay, what, like, so I decided, like, okay, what was the best film of my opinion of the decade? Uh, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. In my opinion, the best film of the decade was Django Unchained. People will argue me on that, but fuck you. It's my opinion. Uh, I have seen this movie more than any other movie this past decade over and over and over again than Django. I've heard more people love that. Everybody I've talked to loves that movie. It's a goddamn fun movie. I have never had more fun in a theater watching Django Unchained than I did uh, any other movie. I love Django Unchained. It's one of, my opinion, probably Tarantino's best movie. Uh, other than, like, Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is up there, too. Like, every, like, this is, I love, Tar- I love Django Unchained. It's my opinion, the best film of the decade. Fuck you if you don't disagree with me. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's my film, my opinion of the best film of the decade, my, you know, top 10 list. Give me what you, give me your thoughts of what you thought. Um, I am, I am going to do a worst list. It's only going to be a five, top five, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a worst list. And I, after that, until then, I'll talk to you guys later.